Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics, where we are restoring a 68 Chevelle Nomad wagon. Okay, last couple episodes we got, we replaced the cowl, used one, uh, welded in new metal on the top window channel, and I just now got the windshield in. Got it from Auto City 1958 on eBay. I think it's called Auto City Glass. And this is it here. Uh, it arrived all the way from Minnesota. Crack free. Okay, this is the cheapest I could find with shipping. $199.95 for shipping. So about 300 bucks all said and done. Okay, uh, as you can see, it's tinted on the top. Now, these windshields uh, are for wagon and four doors. Okay, the two door is different. It's, it's, it's shorter here, so it won't work. Okay, so you got to look for a wagon or a four door car. Okay, and I just measured it. There's the old one there. It's the same. So I don't have to set it up there to see. And uh, now they're the same from 68 to 72. But 70 to 72 has the antenna in the windshield. Okay. So that's fine. If you don't want to use it, you don't use it. You can use the Defender one. But either or. Apparently the 6869 without the antenna wasn't available or they don't make them or whatever but anyway I was just happy to get this one it's got a nice new windshield instead of this old rusty crusty with all the laminate peeling from it and just crappy looking okay so all I need to do it's just a crappy day out it's been in the 90s for the last two weeks and then today it's just like I don't even know what the what it is probably about 60 something degrees looks like it's gonna rain chilly uh, not an ideal to put in the windshield because that urethane is pretty damn if you're doing it manually from a gun there it's uh, it's pretty hard on the wrists so I usually like to let that sit out in the Sun for a while make it easier to to uh, get out of the caulking gun so I don't know but it's gonna rain so I really want to get the windshield in there so I don't know might put them in the oven for th 20 minutes and <laughs> let it heat up real good okay so all I got left to do uh, I put the clips on the on the side pillars uh, I'm gonna have to drill holes and put in little screws or rivets right along the top so I get that in there, and then we can just run a bead of urethane all the way around. It's got the little, uh, I left the little tabs in there to hold the windshield up in the right position. Uh, I don't know if there's supposed to be a little piece of rubber on there, but I'll just put a little piece of urethane on top. And then you just set the window in and let it sit on this and plop it down. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm fixing to do. Uh, I wanted to go over this VIN. I mentioned it on the last video. I, I, I researched the story of this. See, someone commented on one of my videos about that story. And I didn't know. At the time, I didn't read about it. So I, I read about it. And it's funny because I was reading about it the other morning. And I had the TV on in the background. And I think it was Cars TV or some thing comes on Saturday mornings and what segment did they have but that same story so here's the story this guy bought a 59 Corvette from he lives in Kansas he bought it through a dealer in Illinois had it shipped to his uh, or whatever got, got it back to Kansas so he had to go down to the Kansas DMV to change the title into his name and get a Kansas title well they require an inspection through either the highway patrol or the 
whatever it is. He had to have it inspected before and signed off before uh, he could get a Kansas title. So he brought it down there and the inspector guy uh, found out that the rivets to hold the VIN on had been taken off and put on by the wrong rivets. Now I'm not quite sure whether the Kansas law at the time was you couldn't change it over or you it would be okay with the right rivets or whatever. So. The inspector says, well, uh, we're going to confiscate your car. Kansas, state of Kansas, says that if the, alt, if the VIN number has been taken off and on, it's considered contraband and must be destroyed. Now, this is a car got, the guy just paid $50,000 for. So, of course, it went through the court system. It's been in the court system for four years now. And the Kansas law, that's what it said. It said the car had to be destroyed. This guy's been fighting it. He spent $30,000 in uh, court fees, lawyer fees, trying to fight it. And uh, they didn't charge anybody criminal. But so, so what had happened with the car was it was restored at some point, And then the restorer had put on the VIN number, just like I did, They'd taken it off, repaired the area, and then riveted the VIN on there with the wrong rivets. Nobody was charged criminally, there's no criminal act. In fact, the court, this is how stupid it is, the, uh, the state filed against the car, not against the individual or any, the owner or the previous owner or the body shop. They didn't file against any of them, they filed against the car, a thing. So anyway, it's been going on for four years, and uh, he can't get his money back from the seller because the court deems that it was a, a legitimate sale. Uh, so he can't get no no money back from the, from the seller. Uh, and so the at the end of the story, it says that Kansas just legislator just passed a law uh, I I don't know the exact name of the law but it's something about common sense and they changed it to allow for VINs tags to be swapped during restoration not swap but taken taken off and putting back on so that's that's how it is right now. We don't know the end result of the story. It's it's going on right now. So he may get it back, but now the car's got twenty eight thousand dollars in damages from being sitting in storage. The state of Kansas has been jacking it around in different warehouses and stuff like that. Okay, so it looks like he'll probably get it back, but he's lost thirty thousand in attorney fees, twenty eight thousand dollars in damage. And it's just been a big hassle. Okay, so that's the story. Now, that's Kansas. Now, from what I understand is every state's a little different. Uh, one guy commented that his state, he called up, I don't even know, what, I can't remember what state, and they required an inspector to come out there and watch while the body shop takes off the VIN. And then they got to call them back when they vid, uh, rivet it back on. And then they sign off on it. So uh, other states don't care. The, um, the only federal law, from what I understand, is that, you know, you can't take, you can't take this VIN and put it on another car or vice versa. You can't take a VIN from another car and put it on. But that's not what I did here. That's not what that guy, that happened to that guy's 59 Corvette. So every state's a little bit different. Whatever state you're in, uh, look it up. And like I said before, I'm not too worried about it. It's on this car. Uh, my state is not going to sit there and take the dash mm -hmm. apart, uh, all the gauges and dash and everything apart to see the bottom of these rivets 
because this is hidden by the by the dash cover to see if the right rivets were used. I know my state doesn't do that because I've titled out of state cars before. All they do is look at the VIN and verify and sign off that that VIN's the correct one that matches the title. The, the Corvette, by the way, did match. All the VINs matched. It had three, three VINs on the Cor 59 Corvette in the story, and they all matched. And I have no doubt this is going to match. This number is going to match probably at least three that are on this car. One I mentioned before was in the heater core uh, vent. Uh, I don't know. It's probably one on the frame. So I'm not worried at all about this car doing that. Um, the laws could change this could be sold I'm not selling it but who knows in the line somebody might acquire this car after I die and try to register it in another state and whether they get up underneath there and look at the, the rivets who knows it could be a hassle for the next person but uh, the way I kind of see it is a 59 Corvette's worth a lot of money so it may have been real easy to see the bottom. I don't know where the where the VIN number is on the Corvette. Somebody mentioned one of them. I don't know if the particular one they're talking about, but one of them's on the steering column of a 59 Corvette. I don't know if one's up here like this, but it probably might have been real easy for that inspector to see. And then being a 59 Corvette, he probably thought, oh, we better scrutinize this car real good because these are known to be, you know, stolen, chopped up, and put together, and all that. So anyway, I think it was more of a fluke thing that happened, not commonplace. But just be prepared uh, that it could happen. So like I mentioned before in the other video, I've heard people, when they replace this, if, if you got the metal, is to cut it out like this. And then when you put your new piece in, just weld it in. Grind it down, smooth it out. Just don't alter these rivets. So it's up to you. Don't, don't, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you legal advice. Just check your state, your country, whatever, if you got to do that. But, you know, I know a lot of these things are replaced. You know, it's a common piece to rust out. So what other people are doing, I don't know. Okay, I just thought I'd mention that story since I did research it. Uh, I said I'm not worried about it on this car. Okay, we're going to get this done here. I don't know if it's going to warm up or rain or what. Okay, off camera. Uh, I got this rear end scuffed down a little bit. And I took off the, the brake lines. Amazingly, these came undone from the uh, wheel cylinder without twisting or rusting or nothing so I stripped them all down got all the wheel cylinders brake pads springs everything off the hubs I started sanding it down and I power washed it there was surface rust inside the gears because I'd left that cover loose over for a couple of years clean that the best I can it sat up like this and I poured probably too much fluid in there but I filled it up with a lot of fluid and then silicone the uh, cover back on there. And in the last video, I'd replaced the, uh, the yoke on it. Got the, old, got the old yoke here that was broke. Tab was broke off, so I put on the new yoke and the uh, seal. So uh, I'm clean up a little bit more. Put some pour 15 on it and then get ready get this 10 bolt ready to pull out of there uh i should have soaked them bolts i may do that soak them with some pb blaster or whatever for the uh the uh suspension trailing arms other than that the rest will come off the two shocks uh hopefully them brake lines will come off easier as easy as the 12 bolt um I'm not sure if I'm going to, uh, I'd like to reuse them brake lines, but I'll take it off like this 12 bolt and uh, blow them all out. Make sure they're all uh, not rusted and crudded up in there. If, they're, if they seem to be okay, like the fuel line, I'll reuse them. I just don't want to, 
I don't have the brake flange tools and benders and all that, and I don't really want to make all new brake lines. If this one works, we'll use it. For now, you know, later on I might replace it, but... Okay, so, uh, yeah, I gotta get them bolts off the trailing arms and the main thing. So we may get that done this video. Change it over to a 12 bolt. Okay, so let me get back when uh, I get something accomplished. I'll be back. Kitty brought one of her little kittens out. How you doing, little kitten? Where's your other two, kitty? What you doing, little kitty? What you doing? I don't know where the other two are, but puppy quiet. Probably the first time out from underneath the house in the grass. I don't know, I hope the other, I haven't seen the other two in a while. I hope they survived. Uh, last year, I seen a big old snake. I mean, he was about a 10 footer. And that's, I was kind of worried about that, that a snake might get in there and try to get him. But uh, anyway, that's one little kitten. Thought you'd like to see that. I'll be back. Here's the other two. They're still alive. Well, well, there's one. The other one, I opened up the door and they were both hanging on this ledge. Want to come out? I don't know, the other one might have ran away. But anyway, yeah, there's still three. As long as puppy doesn't try to eat them, it should be all right. Well, guys, there's four kittens. <laughs> Thought there was only three. There's two uh, red ones. There's a black stripe and a gray one here. There's actually four of them. Uh, two of them been outside all day the little gray one came out about an hour or so ago and I just came out about was in the house about 20 minutes and the other red one came out so we got uh, four of them I made a little hole here in the bottom with a little walk through through this brick so they can get in and out So I guess that's how the, because initially the one red one came out, orange one, came out with Mama. She climbed up through the through the top hole. So I made the little hole there, and the other two came out, and I guess the fourth one came. Anyway, that four little kitties got to worry about. Hopefully they uh, won't get caught up in the end sitting in in the engine compartment when I start a car and stuff like that, you know. But anyway, just thought I'd show you. There's at least four. I don't know. There might be some more in there. Who knows? Okay, guys. Trying to get this handle out. I did get it out. But first, you got to disconnect the, uh, the window from these two tracks here. Go to here here because uh, you can't get at these two studs right here it's right underneath it's right here so you got to take a, the window pull the window up and then take four bolts for the regulator which goes into these four get that out just so you can get at the two studs here and pop this out yeah, I was thinking I should have probably bought a new one of these too, but I don't know if they, I don't, I don't think I've seen the bottom one for sale. 
at least from that one seller I bought the rest of the stuff from. So, this is what's called the clutch. I guess that's what goes there and turns it. Okay. But, of course, we got to put this all together. The last, the last piece I bought was the lock. Um, so I got to attach all this stuff together to the base and then bolt it back in, then bolt this back on, which is kind of, going to kind of suck because I, if I want to paint the car, I think I'm just going to leave this on when I paint the car. I'd like to take it off, but I don't want to go through all this again. Uh, so I don't know. I may sand and kind of paint that black where this mounts to. And when it comes time to paint the car, mask it up because it's going to be kind of a mess. Um, the other thing is, too, I think this window probably will have to come out to replace this, uh, this molding here. So what I'm worried about getting water in there. I have to order that pretty quick. I don't know. I may have to take it all apart. This one, this seal here, I'm not too worried about it. Um, these seals here are not too bad. I don't think it's been leaking. I mean, they're probably crap, but it's going to be pretty hard for water to get in. And then, of course, eventually I'll probably have to take all this chrome off, but uh, I don't really feel like taking all this stuff apart and leaving it off for months and months. So, anyway, I'm going to put this together. Probably have to look on the internet to see where those little things go. And then mount this back and get the window so it winds up and down. So, uh, I'll be back in a little while. Okay, guys, on uh, that Einstein site, for the wagons it's got a little video uh, how to put this together and uh, it wasn't the best video it's it didn't show which well you have to put this little that little deal there in and he didn't actually show how which way was facing which and I had to jack around with it and finally got it so yeah, you put the lock in there, and then that, uh, uh, I forget what that's called. And then this thing's called the clutch. Okay, so it works now. It actually locks. So you turn the key one way, uh, like this, and it's locked. And you turn it the other way, and then it spins. So, and then that way. Is locked. So we have a working handle. Um, I'm hoping that is for that. I mean, it's that's what it's supposed to be. That's the only only one they sell. Okay, so I'm gonna put this together. I'm gonna blow all this. This whole car is just full of this old dirt. I'm gonna clean all this up, lube it up. And then bolt all this back in. Uh, and then figure out what to do with this later. I can always just uh, detach the window from these two here. And I'm hoping I can pull the whole window out. This, this thing seems awful thick to get through there. But either way, we'll get it figured out. Okay, so let me get this back together and I'll be back. Okay guys, we got it all back together. So now it works. There's a window going up. Window coming down. And then you turn it that way. And it locks it so it just spins.
So there it is. And I'm not sure exactly how nice that's supposed to fit in there, but yeah, if you're new, uh, all this stuff was missing. All that was left with this housing there was no mechanism in there no lock n none of this handle uh so yeah that einstein they wanted 250 for the whole assembly i ended up buying this piece here for like 50 uh and then i needed that little clutch thing and everything and that was another 38 and then you had to have the lock in there to make that work so the lock was 28 so uh 160 170 bucks no not 170 no 100 58 38 and 28 whatever that is 100 120 bucks something like that uh that's what i got a fix for so that's it it'd be nice if it had a power uh power window thing but it doesn't and I'm not sure if I could hook one up or not um, yeah I'll have to take it all apart again to take all this stuff off when I paint it but anyway trying to work in between the rain here uh, I did get the windshield in there's a new windshield it's a little bit messed up along the top here it looks like it's too far in. No, it's raining. Okay, I'll, I'll be back after the rain. Well, guys, we got Kitty and our four little ones here. And someone just called about an ignition for a 03 Mustang. So I went and looked in the car make sure it was there i gotta show you this now i think the mother is kitty's mother she's an orange red cat but she puppy chases her all the time so she don't come around too much and i don't know how many other cats live around here on my property but uh And of course, she, the mother's not here. She must have ran off. But we got the, there's four of them. Oh, is that one something wrong with its eye? And there's, there's one over there. It was all four were on the seat. Maybe both of them are over there on the passenger side. I don't know. Well, this guy looks like his eyes messed up. I can see a bunch of mosquitoes around. So anyway, looks like at least four more kittens. They look well fed and everything. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. There's probably more around here. It's springtime. Got a... Let's see, there was a couple of possums. Puppy tried to kill one, but it just played dead. This was about a month or so ago. Uh, haven't seen a raccoon this year. Uh, a lot of rabbits. Little white butt cottontails or whatever they are usually a lot of them around every spring uh used to have a whole family of uh road runners but puppy scared them off uh so anyway yeah there's lots of varmints around here uh also we stopped a couple of weeks ago uh the price of scrap went down 
dropped dramatically from uh, 250 to 170, I think, in the last uh, three weeks. So I haven't scrapped any cars in a couple of weeks, mainly because my friend Tommy hasn't been over. Uh, he's had some other stuff to do. But I did haul, haul out uh, 48 cars all together. A lot out of this area. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'll probably stop scrapping cars for a while. Probably start buying some more. But anyway, just thought, I'd, and I know there's a lot of cat lovers watching, so I just thought I'd show you these these little guys here. Okay, well, I'll be back. Okay, guys, there's a better, better shot of the windshield. Um, this is where it was dented in, right here. And I kind of sanded, scraped with a razor blade and sanded the uh, urethane because I really packed that urethane in really good around the, <clears throat> around the edges inside and out because I don't want no leaks. But it looks like it's down just right in here, right in between where I put these clips. So I don't know. Yeah, I can feel it. I may build this up with a little body filler right in here. I'm kind of cleaning all this urethane out so I can uh, fit the uh, fit the moldings on there. Uh, this molding here on the passenger side was uh, missing. So I gathered up the four that I had for the parts car right here. And then uh, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, windshield for two doors, a couple inches smaller, shorter. That's how short it is. Um, this is the driver's side for the wagon. You can see they sanded it all when they painted it purple. There's a little hail dent. The two-door one doesn't look too bad. It'll clean up with some steel wool. But I don't know if the uh, the big bottom chrome one will cover that. That's what I'm, I'm fixing to do right now. As you put that in, then that big chrome one covers it at the bottom. So if those little shorter ones will fit, um, I'm going to do that. Just fit them on there real, make sure they fit. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Painted this with Pour 15. And uh, it'll take a while to dry overnight. So uh, I think wait till next episode and I'll take this 10 bolt out and probably clean up all the top there and Pour 15 that. And then uh, put this rear end in, put on all the brakes and everything, brake lines. I think I'll wait to do that next episode. Okay, the, uh, the roof is just a little bit low between here and here, like I mentioned. But it's got a, it's got a dent here, which I banged out. But I'm fixing to put that sunroof in sometime. And of course, that's going to have to be all body filled around. So I'll probably wait until I do the sunroof and then build this up just a little bit. Um, I did put on this chrome. Chrome for a two door and a wagon is different. The uh, wagon was actually, was it thinner? Yeah, it was a lot thinner. I don't know why. But I put this on from the Chevelle because the uh, holes lined up for this. I just went ahead and put that on, put the wipers on. Uh, cleaned up all the chrome. So that's all ready to put on, but I don't know whether I want to put that on now or after it's painted. I'm not sure. I just want to make sure it fits and everything. It should, but I really packed that urethane in there. It's getting all this pollen and stuff everywhere, but... 
Okay, uh, the brand is Pilkington, made in Mexico, but I think all windshields are made in Mexico. So, and that was the box that it came in. Like I said, very well packed. Uh, what else? Oh. We got this all done. This window actually comes out about here. It goes way up in there. So I'm not too worried about that seal there. Um, this seal here is not screwed in. It's just got those clips that push in. So you don't really have to take this apart. If you get this out and you push the new one in. Uh, I only found one place on eBay that sells it. It's $50 plus $20 to ship it. So 70 bucks for that piece. So I guess I'll order that. I mean, I could probably rig something up. But if I did, I'd have to put screws and drill holes and stuff. Whereas this, it just clip right on there. And I don't have to take it back apart. Well... I may have to for this for this chrome molding for this chrome uh, emblem thing here okay uh, of course it was open like this for a couple of days while it was raining so I got water everywhere I drilled drain holes the drain hole down here in this storage it was full of water and uh, same with that one there's a little bit of water Okay, my spare that I showed you last time, I mean, it looked good, the tread was good, but it had a lot of dry rot in between the tread. I was mainly concerned about the drywall. But, um, so I found another tire and rim. And I put that in there, and I got this off eBay. Um, so I mounted a little deal in there so it ain't going nowhere and ain't gonna rattle around I also drilled the drain hole down there because that was filling up with water too okay so I got all them little jobs done um, so I haven't decided what I'm gonna do about this uh, I'm gonna recover this floor for sure not sure about this yet Okay, so I'll put that on later. So I think I'll end this video. Didn't get a lot of big stuff done. I got the windshield done. I got the rear end ready to put in there. Got the tailgate handle and all that situated. Um, and like I said before, there's just a million other things to do on it. Um, these, I forget what I belt belt moldings there's another name too i forgot uh i'm not sure if i'm going to replace these vent ones they're only a hundred dollars for a two door but a four door is a little bit different i haven't checked on the price of them i'm gonna have to order the uh, window channel rubber goes along here these belt moldings um probably just i think it's one 50 or something for the four outside and then like 258 for all four or eight of them i guess including these ones here so i don't know i may i may not buy the inside ones they don't look too bad but shh, they're 54 years old already got the weather stripping uh got the material for the door panels uh, probably order all new window winders and these. These are all crusty here. So that might come up pretty soon. Gonna take out the door panels, make some door panels, cover them, uh, put on these belt moldings, put in the window channel rubber. 
Uh, there was something else too. I can't. Oh, and then put on the weather stripping and paint all the door jams. They're all going black. So that's coming up. I think I want to do that pretty soon. Uh, still got water coming in, but not from the windshield. It all collected down here. And I'm not sure it's coming in from both sides. I think it was all full of leaves down here. I was blowing it out with air down in here. And it was just leaves coming up. Um, so anyway, I have to figure that out. I'll get a hose up and see exactly where that's where that's coming from. But anyway, that windshield sealed. That cowl is sealed. So I'll figure it out. Okay, and we got all this stuff to clean up, dash to recover. Tons of stuff to go. So anyway, I guess we'll end this video like this. And uh, we'll get after our next video. Get that rear end put in there. And hopefully some other stuff. Okay, so uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And if you want a bumper sticker, help out the channel, $5 to uh, my email at paypal.com, clunkersandclassics at gmail.com. Okay, so uh, my little helpers. Okay, so uh, we'll see you all next video. Thanks, everybody, for watching.